Hello friends, welcome to Codechef. This is Suraj and in this video, let's discuss this problem construct n from status 47. Now let's understand the problem statement. So here in this problem, we are given one integer n and we need to find if it is possible to represent n as a sum of several 2s and several 7. Okay, and uh, let's see the formal representation of it. So we are given this equation here that is 2x plus 7y equal to n. So here in this equation, we will be given the value of n and we need to find out the value of x and y such that both x and y are greater than and equal to 0 and they are integers. Okay, so in short, x and y are non-negative integer. So if we are able to find out the values of x and y, which are non-negative integers, then we'll output yes, otherwise we will output no. So now let's see the sample input and output. So here in the input, first of all, we'll get total number of test cases that is equals to t. And then for each and every test case, we'll get just one line with one integer only that will be the value of n for that particular test case. And for any given n, we need to output just one line. If it is possible to find out the integer value of x and y, we'll output yes, otherwise we'll output no. Now let's see the test cases. So here, in the, uh, here is the first test case where the value of n is equals to 2. So the equation will be 2x plus 7y is equals to 2. So here in this equation, we can put x equal to 1 and y equal to 0 and this value of x and y will satisfy this equation. So answer is yes. Then let's see the second test case. Here the equation will be 2x plus 3y is equal 2x plus 7y is equals to 5. So here there is no integer value possible, no, pos uh, no uh, non-negative integer value of x and y is possible such that uh, the the equation will satisfy and hence the output for the second test case here is no. Now let's see the third test case here. So equation is 2x plus 7y equal to 7. Here this is the value of n which we got from here. So this is n. Okay. So here we can put x equal to 0. So this will be 0 and y equal to 1. So we'll get uh, this equation satisfied and hence the output for third test case is yes. And now let's see the fourth one here. So fourth one again, 2x plus 7y is equals to 11. So we can put y equal to 1. So it will become 7. Okay. So we took y equal to 1. And then we can write 2x plus 7 is equals to 11, which will be 2x is equals to 11 minus 7. And then x will be equals to 4 divided by 2. So we get x equal to 2. So for x equal to 2 and y equal to 1, this equation is satisfying. Okay. And hence the uh, answer for the fourth test case is yes. Here I have assumed y for y equal to 0 and here we'll see for y equal to 1 what we are getting. So let's see if we keep y equal to 0, then this term will disappear. So our entire equation will become n is equals to 2x. Okay. So this entire equation will become n is equals to 2x. Then for x equal to 0, we'll output 0. So the and for x equal to 1, we'll get true. For x equal to 2, we'll get 4 and so on. So here you can see that we are actually getting all the even numbers greater than 0. So here we are getting all evens okay now let's see if we keep y equal to 1 then this expression will become 2x plus 7 and that will be equals to n so here if we keep x equal to 0 then we'll get 7 okay this term will disappear then for x equal to 1 we get 2 plus 7 that will be simply equal to 9 and for x equal to 2 we'll get 2 multiply by 2 plus 7 that is 4 plus 7 which we will get 11 for x equal to 3 we will get 13 and so on. So here you can see that we are getting all odd numbers all odd numbers greater than equal to 7. Okay so if we keep y equal to 0 then we can choose respective value of x to get any even number. Okay. And if we keep y equal to 1, then again we can choose respective value of x to get any odd number greater than and equal to 7. So, 
out of this two cases then we are left out with numbers that is 1 3 and 5 so 1 3 and 5 these are the three odd numbers which we can never get for any uh, non negative integer value of x and y okay so our approach will be now simply we'll check n and if n is equals to 1 3 or 5 then we'll output no otherwise we'll output yes i hope you understood logic to this problem but still if you have any doubt now you can use this uh, new feature in codechef that is codechef's doubt support so let me just show you how you can use this new feature so let's say you go to this practice section and uh, let's say i pick any problem so let's let me pick this uh, age limit problem then here in this problem let's say i'm stuck and i'm unable to understand this problem or you may uh, get any confusion so what you can do here is you can go to this ask a doubt section and here you can chat with our experts so let me start this new chat and here i'll ask a simple question so let me ask So here you can see that uh, my doubt is answered and similarly you can also ask your doubts in the doubt support and get the answers quickly. So this doubt support will be available 24 by 7. So you can ask any doubt re uh, regarding this problem and the experts will be there to answer your questions. Here is the implementation in C++. So first of all I am getting T the total number of test cases then I am calling solution function for each and every test case and here in the solution function i'm accepting the value of n then here i'm checking if n is equals to 1 3 or 5 then i'll output no otherwise i'll output yes here is the similar implementation in python so first of all i'm accepting t the total number of test cases then i'm calling solution function for each and every test case and here in the solution function i'm accepting the value of n then here i'm comparing if n is 1 or n is 3 or if n is equals to 5 then I'll output no otherwise I'll output yes. So I hope you understood the logic and its implementation in both C++ and Python. In case you have any doubt feel free to write in the comments. So let's meet in another video. Thank you so much.